a small fawn bird sitting on a stick looking at the ground. When it flies, there is a flash of red, and the underwing is white. This is a scarlet robin. The male can look like a hooded robin with a black hood extending down the back. Watch now as it turns. There, that nice little bit of scarlet. A scarlet robin. Now the female. She is more grey with a softer, more pale scarlet. In 1729, the robin was called Musicarpa Multicolor and the first painting of it that I can find was done by John Lewin and then again, 50 years later, John Gould and his wife did a beautiful illustration of these birds. He called it Petroika Multicolor. The common name was Scarlet Breasted Robin. Here is the distribution map for the Scarlet Robin. We are going to go to the upper reaches of the Hunter Valley, into the Divide, where we have crossed the highest part of the Divide and we are now starting to descend. This is at approximately 1,000 metres. This time the male is facing forward and we can see all his red, black and white. Now watch, as he takes off, the black wing has a white underwing. When they sit on a perch, if they get excited, particularly if the partner of the bird comes in, they will do a lot of flicking of the tail on the wings. Here on the tablelands you can see how these birds behave. They fly from a perch, down in this case, to a water pond where we are photographing. But when feeding we'll fly down to catch an insect. Most feeding is done on the ground. Petroika means rock home, and this is a classical stance of a robin on a rock looking for food. The classic male with the tricolour appearance, the deep scarlet chest and the black hood with a white fronds. The underwings are white. Now the female, the black hood is replaced by grey and the scarlet chest is more of a pale scarlet and the fronds is much smaller. Both birds have a stocky body with small delicate legs. Studies in the ACT have shown that these birds are altitudinal migrants going to the top altitudes more in summer and in winter coming down and dispersing to lowland areas. Unfortunately the scarlet robin is a threatened species. It's found that in urbanised areas it really comes close to human habitation mostly staying more than three kilometres from any buildings as these coloured birds that are ground feeders are easy prey for domestic pets. But as they don't come into urbanised area, the loss of habitat is probably the most important factor for their decline and listing as a vulnerable species. 
The habitat of these birds is woodland with some understory and for some reason they like a lot of wood on the ground and this can be found at this site in the central tablelands. As you can see there is good understory, a lot of dead wood on the ground and a mixture of trees, snow gums, ribbon gums and black sally. I've just set up this waterhole. I know that there are red robins in this area. Naturally we want to get photographs of them. We have quite a few robins in Australia. The main one around here is the eastern yellow robin. We're in the, in the divide halfway between the Queensland border and Victoria. And it's summer. So with a bit of luck, we're gonna get some red robins. We're too far west to get the rose robins and probably a little bit too far to get the flame robins. So the scarlet robin is probably gonna be the main one. And then we're really not far enough west to get the red cap robins, but they do come here and I have seen them. So we're gonna just try a simple water hole. We know that they're about, and the rest of the name of the game is patience. In the background, you will hear a male robin calling. In this case, the female responds by bill clicking. Just listen to the soft sounds. Well, the background calls are fairly vigorous, so it's hard to hear the bill clicking, but it's interesting that this is a feature of the robins. As mentioned, we are doing this photographic session at a high altitude, just below 1,000 metres. And the reason for this is that the birds come here in summer, presumably for breeding. But I'm uncertain of this, for on this occasion we have not seen any young, immature birds. And being February, this is what we would expect if active breeding had been taken place. The effect of global warming on these birds, I believe, is going to be horrific, with more extreme cold and more extreme heat. So this altitudinal summer shift may not be sufficient for these birds to survive. They are already declining at approximately 20% over a three-year period. If this trend continues by 2050, this bird will be extinct. <laughs>